Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns, your host um, at the Nebraska Library Commission. And Encompass Live is our weekly online event that we've been doing here um, since the beginning of 2009. We cover all sorts of NLC activities and library topics. We've had presenters from the Library Commission and from outside come in. We do have guest presenters coming in on any kind of topic that may be of interest to libraries and librarians in the state. Um, this, we do this live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, um, and the session is recorded, so if you're not able to attend during our live sessions, you can watch the recording at your leisure later. This morning, we have uh, Sally Snyder with us from the Nebraska Library Commission, who's going to be talk <laughs> talking about um, the One Book for Nebraska Kids and One Book for Nebraska Teens program that the um, commission does. So take it away, Sally. Okay, thank you. Or just the camera for you. I'm going to scoot around a little bit. <laughs> I'm right between the windows and the background there. <clears throat> Let me know if my voice is loud enough. I was really pleased to be asked to do this session. I think Krista got it up. And I thought, well, that's a good idea. And um, I'm glad that a few people have signed up to be here today, and I hope other people will watch it after it's loaded onto our system. And um, we'll just talk now about one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens. So we know that the statewide reading program for adults began, I believe, in 2005 with My Antonia by Willa Cather. And that was successful. People were excited about it. Libraries had programs. And so that program has continued each year with a new book and a new um, focus. And I I can't remember exactly when it was, but Sharon Osenga, who's the administrator of the Meridian Library System, she and I, not long after I became the new uh, Children's and Young Adult um, Services Coordinator, I went to meet with uh, Sharon and we had a discussion about a number of things, and one of them she was keen on was, we need to have a program like the adult one, but for children and teens. And I said, ooh, that sounds like a good idea. And so we talked about ways to get started. She and I um, met a couple of times and talked uh, via the internet about some things. And so then in, um, let's see, 2007 was the first year for one book for Nebraska kids. And I'm the one who named it. Um, a lot of people call it one book, one Nebraska, four kids. That's okay. I just. Uh, one book for Nebraska kids flowed nicely, and so I called it that. I wasn't really thinking about being more consistent with the, with the one book, one Nebraska. So we're just slightly different, but that's all right. So we started the first year was 2007, and we used the book Rescue Josh McGuire by Ben Michelson. And mostly we chose that book because Sharon Osenga recommended it, uh, since she was the one who really kind of got me started on this, and I thought, I didn't have a better suggestion. I had some ideas, but I thought, well, why not use this book? And it was successful. I think we had a lot of kids across Nebraska reading and discussing that book, and I was really pleased. And, and then we were fortunate enough to be able to bring Ben Michelson to the state in 2008, which was also very successful. Don't expect that every year. <laughs> but it was um, a wonderful opportunity for a lot of communities and kids and adults. Then. I decided, again, just me making up my own mind, that it was a lot of work to have one book for Nebraska kids. And it, there's just a time frame where, it's, where I'm pretty busy with it, and then the rest of the year it kind of flows by itself. But I thought having one book for Nebraska teens, two in the same year, would just double that work. And so I thought, well, let's just alternate. Sounded really good to me, and I don't know how all of you feel about it, but that's what I decided. So in 2008, One Book for Nebraska Teens was the featured book, and it was the book piece by Marcus Dusak. And again, that book was very successful. We did have quite a discussion, and, and you'll find out who I mean by we and when I talk about how the books are decided now, because Sharon does not pick them every year. I don't think she wants that responsibility, <laughs> although she was happy to choose the first book. But we did have a discussion about whether the book should be for um, middle school age or for high school age. Because initially, when I was deciding on this program, I thought the teens would be more middle school age. 
Well, I had uh, several people talk to me about that and say, you know, the Golden Sower Young Adult book is geared towards middle school, which is fine. But there isn't anything that's geared for high school. And it would be really nice if your one book for Nebraska teens was geared for high school age. So my youth advisory board and I talked about it, and we decided that would be the direction we'd go for 2008. And the book thief was selected as the, as the book. And, you know, when I first looked at the book thief, I thought, oh, my goodness, it's so long. Teens are going to want to read it. Well, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> and, and at first it wasn't in paperback, but then it came out in paperback, and so we were good. And it's been very popular. And also there are a number of adult book groups that have been using the book thief for their book discussion book as well, which is just great. And so when I, when I thought about one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens, another thing I thought of was, because I'm going to alternate years, each book will be the featured book for two years. So one book for Nebraska kids began in 2007. It was still the one book for Nebraska kids for 2008, although I don't call it that up there because we didn't get another one until 2009. And that kind of helps people um, think of it, if you think of it that way, because when initially when the book is announced and people are organizing their book groups, they get on the list, and we have quite a few people with this year's book again, which I'm so pleased about. But also, there's the fact that you don't have to talk about it in 2008 or 2009, because you have another year to get it. It might be more available for you to use in another year. So I thought, well, that's helpful too. So the book for this year, 2009, as you may or may not know, is again, this year it's one book for Nebraska kids, and it's The Green Glass Sea by Ellen Clodges. And that was a book that I had not read until it was recommended, and um, my youth advisory board, which I'll, again I'll talk about in a little bit, um, read a number of books. They're so good to take the time, and usually it's in the summer when I'm asking them to do this, really a busy time for them, and here I am saying, please read 12 books, or however many there are. Um, but they're, they're very good about doing that and, and helping make the decision as to what book will be chosen. So again, green, the Green Glass Sea will be the one book for Nebraska to kids for this year and next year, because next year, 2010, we'll be choosing our second one book for Nebraska teens. And I don't know if it's still if we're going to continue with the theme of it of it being a, a high school book or not. But again, that's something that the Youth Advisory Board and I will talk about. Maybe we'll use this system to do that. Hope I don't scare people too much with it. <laughs> okay, so how how were the books selected now after the first year? And I've been talking about the Youth Advisory Board. They're an advisory board to me, to the commission. And it's about 20 children's and teen librarians that are somewhere in Nebraska. They're across the state, which is great. And they're the ones that make this program work. Because as I said, they read the books. Um, they suggest books. Other people can suggest books. Um, and we put them on a list. We have, I'll show you my list about the criteria in a moment or the guidelines. And not only do they do that, but they also provide the information and, and puzzles and other items that you'll find on our web page, and I'll also show you in a little bit. So they really helped um, choose a book that will be a good discussion book, pull together different information that, that libraries and schools can use to discuss the book, and it really helps to have different people doing this because if I did it all, it's all from my point of view. And basically I did a lot of this stuff for Rescue Josh McGuire, which is okay, but it's a lot more fun to have other people helping because they all have different information and different places that they go to find ideas and I don't know all of them, so it's great to have more help. So here are our few guidelines that we've come up with as a group. We decided that we did not want our books to be a Golden Sower nominee. Not that those are bad books. We think those are all pretty terrific. But because already kids are aware of them, kids are reading them, and we wanted to have something else that kids might find a good read and also a good discussion book. So we thought, well, let's not choose a Golden Sower nominee. The next one is that we really want the book, book to fit the suggested age group. And we both, we all know that that's kind of a tricky call because an age group is, their, their abilities and interests are wide ranging. 
but we wanted to be more in tune with what things that that age group might like. And also we want to be sure that the book has some good discussion points. I think many of us have been in a book discussion group where we've read something that everybody really liked and nobody had much of anything to say about it. We all really liked this book, had a good time reading it. And now we're done discussing. <laughs> well, that's not a success. Well, it's not the success that we want. We do want the book to have some things that kids can talk about and ask questions about. Why do you think this character did this, or why was there an issue with that? And, and there can be different viewpoints. And as we all know, all viewpoints are accepted. It's not that it's right or wrong. It's just something to to get a feel for how many different viewpoints there might be about an action that happens in a book. So we want there to be some possibilities for that. Now I mentioned the web page. We do have a, a one book for Nebraska kids slash teens web page and this is its URL. You can also search for it on our home page just by going to our main home page and clicking the search button at the top on the left and typing in one book for Nebraska kids and it comes up as like the fourth choice. I don't know why. But we'll have to work on it. Fourth is pretty good. It's, it's findable. And if you click there, this is what you'll see. It'll look kind of like this. At the top of the page, um, this is, wouldn't it be great if kids all over Nebraska were talking about books? That's been my opening line for all of them because I think that's great. And this top paragraph will have a brief a description of what the current book is about. Um, and then um, some information about how you can get book sets and um, other ideas. What, how we, how I really have planned this so that it's in alternate years. And then down here you'll see the one book for Nebraska kids, the Green Glass Sea. So I'm going to go to the next, my next slide that I put up there so you can see this a little better. This is where you'll find the different items that my youth advisory board has put together for this book. There's a list of activities that you might be interested in. There's author information. I know you can all read this yourself. There's some different puzzles. There's also a new puzzle up that I had already clipped this when I when I um, put this in my presentation today. But Julie, your your puzzle is up there now. Thank you very much, Julie. Awesome. Cool. Oh, she has a microphone too. Yay. <laughs> Um, she's one of the Youth Advisory Board members, and she very kindly put together a crossword puzzle for this this book. And um, so that when you go to the page, you'll see there's another item listed there. But one of the reasons I also wanted to show you this was because you can see that the previous year's books are listed. The items that were put together for those books are still there. So if you've already done the Green Glass Sea and you want to go back and do Rescue Josh McGuire or something else, it's up there, and you can still use it. Um, I also wanted to mention, I forgot earlier, that you can borrow a set of books from the Library Commission or for, from any of the systems. Each system office has a set of, the, of each year's books, too. So they still have Rescue Judge, as far as I know, they still have Rescue Judge McGuire. I'm sure eventually they're going to have to, they're going to run out of room and they're going to be asking me, now is your set back or something. But, um, so, if, if, one place is set of books is booked up for several months and you want to try it somewhere else, you can do that. You can try your system office and then you can try the library commission. And I have to say that what happened with um, the book thief was I bought uh, 14 books plus one book on CD for each of the systems and for the commission, I think we got 10 for the commission. And it, it was less than a month later I was buying 15 more books for each of the system and the commission because they were just getting booked like crazy. So if things are if things are being booked up too much, then we need them and say, Man, I tried to get that book and if they told me I couldn't have it till October, what's with that? And if I had any money in my in my little my little meager fund at all, I will try to buy some more books for um, whoever needs them. Because I talked with Rod about this and I think this is a really an important philosophical point. Rod and I discussed buy more for um, Martha Suzak's book. And he said, well, really, this is a program worth promoting. We want people to be doing this. We don't want to say, well, no, you can't do it for three months or five months. That kind of, you know, negates the whole idea. So 
that's why we try to have enough books for people to, I know you may have, you're still going to have to wait a while, depending on when you want them and when other people want them, but we do try to have enough books so people can um, borrow it for their book group and, and have a good discussion. Oh, here's a sample. This is actually a clueless crossword puzzle, which I just love to do, so I put, I happen to put this one together. This is a sample of some what the puzzles are like that you might find on, on the page. Um, if, whenever I get a chance to do a puzzle, I do a clueless crossword puzzle. <laughs> If you don't like those, well, you can you can volunteer to do a puzzle, and then I won't be doing them. <laughs> so, are there questions about anything I've said so far? And maybe Julie wants to chime in on anything from her perspective as being on the youth advisory board. Let's see. Um, from the being on the board, it was really fun to read all the books and get an opinion out there for other people to bounce ideas off of each other. That was, I think, the best experience of it. I don't think I actually wanted originally the book that we picked, but then once I heard other people's opinions of it, I really liked it and and thought it would really have good discussion quality. So I think that the parameters that we're using are really good for choosing those. Thank you, Julie. And i just like to mention that we do a lot of our discussion via email. We have an email group. And um, I send out a, the, as, I, as I get suggested books, I'll send out a list. Here's, here's five books that have been recommended. Um, please start reading now, and I'll send more as I hear from people. And then I'll send out more lists. And people will start emailing back and saying, wow, I've liked this one so far, but now there's these five other books I'm going to read. Let's see what we end up with. And there'll be some discussion about the pros and cons of particular titles. Or also people will point out to me things that maybe I hadn't noticed, like something with, something with a Newbery winner or a Newbery honor book, which I hope I'm paying attention to, but sometimes gets past me. And then we'll say, well, you know, Newbery's pretty noticeable. Maybe we should look more at some of these other books that are also good discussion books that haven't been as as well um, advertised or whatever the word is we want. I really like that how uh, you're picking books that haven't already been promoted in other areas. You know, there's, there's lots of good books out there. Not all the ones have won the awards and the honors. And so try and read those too. They're, they're good books just as well. And I think the, the Green Glass Sea is a good example of that because um, Julia said she wasn't all, all that keen on it at first. And I had not heard of it till someone recommended it for us to read for our One Book for Nebraska Kids. And somehow I missed that. And here's a book that we really think is pretty terrific. And now other, a lot of other people know about it too. So that is fun. <clears throat> Don't forget, if you do have questions, you can use the text chat if you don't have a microphone to type them in there. We do have that open here, so if you have any questions about the program or any of the books or anything, um, feel free to go type in something in there and ask. Another thing you might type in there or use your microphone is if you have right now have any suggestions or recommendations for books we could look at. You know, I said 2010 will be one book for Nebraska teens, so we're looking at maybe high school, maybe a little bit younger, I don't know yet, but you can make suggestions. And also, 2011 will be one book for Nebraska kids again, so if you know, I didn't define these, did I? I did say high school and maybe middle school. When I'm saying one book for Nebraska kids, I'm usually, I'm thinking of like upper elementary, beginning middle school, so maybe fourth, fifth, sixth grade, you know, right in that range. <laughs> Elena wants Twilight. Elena <laughs> wants Twilight. Haven't they all already read that one? <laughs> well, Elena, that just won the Young Adult Golden Solar Award. Oh, so, okay. since it was the winner, maybe we won't have it for our one book for Nebraska team. I know, now you're going to recommend New Moon, aren't you? <laughs> and I think, I think Wayne, that, that book has been read through the entire city of Wayne, so. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I think you can have a book discussion group and just pull a bunch of kids to, uh, teams together and say, okay, 
all of you who have read Twilight, let's discuss, and they'd be ready to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to tell me right now, but I wanted to give you this chance to recommend something. Also, you can recommend other titles or, or more titles just by emailing or calling on the phone. Any suggestions you have for books that we might want to consider for One Book for Nebraska Teens or, or for kids? And also, if you have a, other questions after you signed off today or if you're viewing this as a recorded session, you can certainly call or email me and ask me questions about whatever's on your mind. I'll try to help. <laughs> Are some of the books you guys may have discussed like classics as well, not just like recently published titles, but like something that might be older to, that maybe some of the teens now or, and kids might not know about because it's old and hasn't come out it's new so they don't even think about it. I mean, That's a good question. And actually, Rescue Josh McGuire came out, oh, ten, no more than 10, was it in the 90s? I think. Uh -huh. But, um, but really, no, we haven't looked, thought about classics. Mm -hmm. They haven't really been on our list, but that doesn't mean we wouldn't consider them. A lot of them have probably, like your criteria is to have won awards, I'm sure, because they're classics. Well, I'm sure there's other ones, too, that have something that happens. Or maybe that, you know. Well, one favorite example is the Charlotte's Web. Mm -hmm. was a, I think it was a Newbery Honor book the year, and the book that won, nobody remembers. I have read that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> it says, yeah, winning award and being popular to the general public. That's yeah. two different things. It's it's not all the same. <laughs> but yes, we could consider older books um, that we think will will have teen appeal. Mm -hmm. And there are very various reasons that books appeal to kids. I forgot to. Another thing that we consider when we're talking about books is we know that a number of book groups are in school, and so. I'm not saying that every book that we consider has to be pure, so to speak, but when we're talking about books for teens, we do have to take into account that schools have a different parameter than public libraries, and so we want to have a choice that everybody can use. So we do want it to have good discussion points, but we want it to be something that, that school and public libraries both they can like work it into their curriculum somehow. They might do that, yeah. Some schools have like an at lunchtime book discussion group or mm -hmm. after school book discussion group. And sometimes it's a, an English teacher that wants to use the set. So it all, it all depends. But we do want to keep that into consideration. And I forgot to put that on my list of guidelines. Something else I want to mention, you can still interrupt and ask questions, but I was prompted to mention this by Lisa, which is on May 20th, not just two weeks from today, Lisa Kelly, who's at the Library Commission, and Vicki Wood from Lincoln City Library will do an encompass session about how to lead a book group for adults or kids. And they'll tell you how to organize and run a book group. And I know they're going to have good suggestions and um, good thoughts for you. So if you've never run a book group or have done it, but it hasn't been a while or just want some pointers, I'd recommend tuning in. Now, Alana is asking that it could be award winner and choose an actually it's the opposite, isn't it? That's right. Actually, it is the opposite. Because award winners get a lot of notice already, we, we wanted to gear our program to something that really hasn't had as much notice. It could have gotten a starred review in a journal, or you know, it could have been on, on a, a, some of these best books of the year list. But if it's an award winner, either the Newberry or um, the Golden Sower list, we, we really wanted to steer away from that because kids are already reading those or being be, having those um, available to them. And we wanted to find something else that was good, but not... The underdog books. Underdog books. Excellent. There you go, yeah. That's it, the underdog books. <laughs> Julie, do you have any other comments? I'd like to know about um, other people's publicity that they use, because I did a lot of publicity, but the best publicity I had was one teenager reading the book and then telling all of his friends to read the book, and then they all came in to read the book. That is the best publicity for teens, for middle school and, and high school, probably for the younger kids, too. If you have someone who loved the book and talking about it, and their friends are going to come and find it too. 
peer pressure is the best publicity. <laughs> but that's a good so does anyone else have publicity ideas? I was just thinking that was something also that you could ask Lisa and Vicky about leading a book group. I'm wondering if they're going to talk anything about getting the book group organized in the first place. Well, gee, I will join right up and do that one. Good. One thing I know that people do when they haven't had a book group before and they're working with teens, um, either middle school or high school, is they'll often start with, um, if they have a teen advisory board, they'll start with them. If you don't, then you start with some kids that you know come in the library and read some things. And you just say, you know, tomorrow afternoon we're going to, some of us are going to meet, we're going to have some cookies or popcorn and Coke. And we're just going to talk about what we've been reading and what we lost. And then they're not all reading the same book. Everybody comes, whoever can come, comes in and says, talks about the books that they've read recently that they like. And that can get things going. Then the, the kids who are there, and there might only be three, they all share their ideas. And pretty soon they're picking up each other's books. And then they're going to talk to their friends and say, hey, you know, we kind of had a good time at the library. And there might be five people next time. Or there might still be three. But you may, you may end up starting pretty small, but when we know when we're working with teens, small is okay, and small is a success. Because teens, to get teens in the library, can sometimes be tricky. Let's see, Alana has a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Alana suggests that it's in publicity using a read poster with one of your youth and the latest book. Um, ALA, you can actually get the software to download and make your own read posters, like what they put out with famous people and celebrities, and have your own people. We actually have it here at the Commission, we I think it's available. Um, so yeah, get one of those teens who came and said, hey, we're going to make you our poster child <laughs> for this year's book, and put them in a read poster and put that up around the library, um, around the town. And then yeah, you have a, a team yeah. of your community promoting the book that goes a long way. Like we said, word of mouth and the poster is a good idea too. Anybody else have any ideas of things to help promote it? Don't forget you can use the text chat. Put down the text chat button on the top of your interface and it'll pop open the window for you if you haven't already done that. Or if there are other questions, not that we're going to ignore Julie, but <laughs> this may be a longer term answer, Julie, than just today. Okay, well, again, if you have questions, just, I'm going to pop this yeah, up a minute, yeah. just email me or give me a call. And ask, or if you have some more ideas for Julie, I know it takes me a little while to think of answers sometimes. So if something comes to you this afternoon, um, let me know or, or email Julie and let her know. And uh, we'll all share whatever we can think of to help promote One Book for Nebraska Kids and One Book for Nebraska Teens and other book groups. And thank you very much, much for tuning in today. You're welcome. Have a great day. Oh, Alana suggested tweet or I am about the book, whatever your teens use to communicate. If they are on Twitter, then you get on there and... Good, yeah. Thank you, Julie, for chiming in when I asked you. <laughs> Thanks for putting on the spot. Oh, gain some applause. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, that was a great session, Bernie. Yes, it was my idea because I, just, I read about it and I said, this is really cool. We should tell more people about it because everybody knows about one book, one Nebraska, but I have never heard about the teen or teen one, so um, this is great. Um, thank you very much, Allie. That thank was you. great. Um, next week, um, we'll be joining us. Our topic for Encompass Live will be government information for you and your customers. Beth Global from here at the Library Commission will be presenting that. And as Sally said, the week after that, on the 20th will be the How to Lead a Book Group for Adults or Kids. So that's our next two upcoming Encompass Live sessions. Um, thank you very much for attending. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.